Hello everyone. I wanted to go through and show you how I start new white worm cultures or what you can do to start your white worm culture when you get one. Um, this is a, I find these at Target occasionally, uh, but any kind of a decent size plastic container, it, it fits in my wine cooler. A regular size shoebox is a little too big to fit. So, and, and you could do a variety of things, cut holes in the top, drill holes in the sides. In this particular case, I have all the different choices. I've put a, a uh, cut a little hole out, and then I use some foam stuff that actually belongs to a, used to belong to a filter. Anything to let the air flow, the pressure off, and keep the worms inside. So, there's a container. You can use peat moss, you can use potting soil, you can use seed starter. I truly do not recommend you use outdoor dirt unless you have a way to really, really cook it and sterilize it or you're just going to bring in a lot of problems. I got a bunch of miracle Grow sphagnum peat moss. Uh, I buy it when I can find it. I use it for the killifish that are, that are peat spawners. I'm going to pour a bunch of this in here. Try not to make a mess. What you'll find about the, the bag of the sphagnum is it's, it's just extremely soft. Same size. There's no sticks, stones, no garbage in it. This is really nice. But seed starting mix or potting soil mix works just as well. I used that for many, many years. Now a lot of people will add some calcium or some oyster shell or something to this. I don't. You certainly can. Uh, what you do need to do, and this is just, I store bottles of water because I need water all the time. You need to get some water in it. Get a little plastic putty knives at Home Depot or Lowe's or lots of other places. And you want to just loosen it up. You don't want to dehydrate your worms when you put them in. You don't want it soggy because soggy is what you fight with the worms. So you just want it kind of loosened up a little bit. About an inch, inch and a half is how much I put in. And then basically that's ready. Here's my whole wheat bread with plain yogurt and uh, brewer's yeast or um, the other name goes out the window but it's not the stuff that rises bread it's the nutritional yeast that's the other name for it you can buy it in a grocery store comes a little can uh, so now we've got a, cult, a new starter here ready to go reach over here in the wine cooler and pull out one of our cultures. I've been at the Raleigh workshop for the last four days so these guys haven't been fed in a while and you can tell they pretty much ate everything down to the bone. Now Charlie Grimes and I got in a discussion in Raleigh about are these worms actually eating this bread. Charlie says they eat the bread and I say despite what you're looking at I don't think they eat the bread. I think they eat the organisms that eat the bread. Because when you first start a culture, if you just got worms, you didn't get any dirt, you'll find that they eat the yogurt and the brewer's yeast, but they don't eat the bread. You look in and it's perfectly good slices of bread, you turn it over and the brewer's yeast and the yogurt is gone. That's because that's the only part that has any culture in it. Until you build up some microorganisms in your soil, you don't really get them eating the bread. So once the microorganisms get going really strong, then they'll eat the bread. So it's very important if you've got a culture that's just worms, or you look and you pick it up and it's, and it's just the, the liquid part of here, the yogurt and the brewer's yeast is gone, but the bread is intact. Put in new food anyway. They're not eating the bread, they're eating the yogurt and the brewer's yeast. So having the nice, good looking bread in there is worthless. Once your culture gets going and it's really strong, both bacteria and 
the bread and the bacteria and the worms, then they'll start eating the bread also. And that's when you know your culture's taken off because you got lots of bacteria. Now, how do you do a new culture that'll take off really quick? Well, the way to do it is since you know they need bacteria out of the soil, give them a big old scoop of this stuff. Watch me spill it all over the floor. But as you can tell, there's plenty of bacteria in there. There's also a bazillion worms. So I'm going to tuck these up a little bit. And I really do need a little more dirt in here since I've tucked it up. Now, as this other culture matures, your problem, of course, is it starts to develop a lot of moisture. Well, guess what? We now have a great way to suck a lot of that excess moisture out. And here's how we're going to do that. We're going to put some of this natural peat moss, very, very dry, here in this corner. That's going to pull moisture that will just slowly wick all the way across. That's going to help dry it all down. If you're having a whole lot of trouble, when you put it back in your cooler, prop up the, the really wet side so the moisture will gravity feed down to the bottom. Now, as I said before, you want to pull this stuff out. They're not really eating this stuff so much anymore. And give them fresh. So, and I've gotten lazy. I've gotten so I just cut a piece of bread into quarters. Put that over. So, that's pretty much done. Need to add a little more water to that stuff that I just added. So now we've got lots of worms. Now you want to give them their initial feedings, kind of touch where the worms are and touch where the media is, because you want them to spread out all over the place. So. Here's a close top, which we'll go over that one. I think it will. There's a couple sizes of these silly things. I guess it won't. I keep this on here because as you get lots and lots of worms, they'll come up on top here and you can scrape them off. They come out pretty clean right off the bat. There, that fits. And that fits. I didn't know those tops didn't each fit each other. So, that's how to start a new one. Put it in the wine cooler. There's a little bit smaller container. And as you can see, it's going crazy also. See, I got lots of bread. And there's plenty of worms in there, boy. You can start a new culture with that. But I need to get these guys eating real food. So I'm going to peel some out. There's no shortage of worms, so I'm not worried about running out of worms in here. So I'm going to get these guys. That's, this means tomorrow this thing will just be overflowing with worms because they'll all come up to eat. They've been uh, kind of starving since Thursday and it's Monday. I've got about six or seven of these going because Usually it means two are doing really well, two are just moving into production, and then a couple are, are kind of crummy. You see, this is getting a little bit of mold started, but there again, it's been sitting there for, extra, for a few days. So I'm going to peel all this stuff out. And if you think this one's not doing real well, let me give you a little dick. See, there's, there's, no, oh, yeah, there's no shortage of worms. They're just burrowed down because there's no food for them to eat. I think I got a couple. I got another another tray over here. I'm up to four, four and a half pieces of bread. So there we go. Because I am really trying to maximize my production. Now what else can you feed these guys? Yes, you can feed them fish food. Yes, you can feed them dog food. 
Yes, you can feed them cat food. Uh, you can probably feed them oatmeal. I'm just always going for as many worms as I can get because I'm too cheap to buy black worms. And these work just about as well and they cost you almost nothing to grow. There's another batch. Get this old bread out of here. Even at this point, they haven't had any food for four days. You can see this one is still new enough. They're not really tearing up the bread. There's a piece they're working on, so I'll leave that. Now, if you want them to run up the sides so they're easy to collect, put the food on the sides. Not too hard. Not too hard to do. Got some worms here on the top. This is not going to be a great harvest of worms because, as I said, I haven't, uh, I haven't been fed in four days. And the couple of cultures that were doing really, really well, that were just like monster supply, uh, I washed those out to bleach them because I didn't want to leave them in the house for four days. I, I was way too afraid they'd crash. not want to come home to a wine cooler where a culture had crashed Now see these guys have eaten all the worm man they have they have gone to it all the bread just about all that bread so good for them so we, we got them reloaded nicely them reloaded and let's see here's a little bit smaller piece this one you see doesn't have any cutouts. What we have in this one is little holes all on the sides. Uh, people ask me if the amount of air getting in makes a difference. I don't think so because I've got holes on the side, holes on the ends, cutouts on the top. I mean, I've done every kind of air hole imaginable. One of my bigger ones doesn't even have an air hole in it. So, there's that. Okay, so that's what goes with, with feeding the worms. I've got a couple pieces left over because the wormy bread is a favorite of my little dachshund. So I always have to save him a little bit of worm. Now, the little pieces of bread that were left over, lots of worms, lots of little bit of this and that and everything else. Uh, no, this is not breakfast. This will go into the compost pile where all of this will become compost for the vegetable garden so nothing gets wasted so that's how we get them restarted there's a quick quick on feeding uh, if I get a chance in the morning I'll do another video and show you what one day of lots of food does to the culture so this is David working out in the fish room thank you for watching